Two words. Revenge to her. We were robbed of a national championship, and Salona Beach is back with vengeance this year. Our top three senior receivers among a senior-led defense didn't get to go home happy with a ring, despite the heroic comeback and late-game interception from Jim Hicks. That really made Coach Phillip Rivers upset, and because of that, he's ready to put the league on notice again this year. There is a rumor it may very well be our last year in the Mountain West, as our contract is up for renewal, and with all the tension we've been getting lately, Power 5 conference conferences have been dangling the carrot right in front of our faces. They promise us big dollar and exposure, so there's no doubt we'll have to consider that for the following season. But for now, we're out to prove that a national champion can come from the Mountain West. We need to close out the chapter from year six and welcome in a new class for year seven. Trust me, there are some certified sponge soakers on that recruit list, and I'll introduce you to them in a minute. For now, we got some off-season logistics to take care of. And starting off on a high note, we have three Salona Beach sponges projected to get drafted in the late rounds of the NFL draft. Vince Manning, Mike Jennings, Mark Coleman, all making history here. Two fifth rounders and a sixth round pick. That's some serious value. Another Salona Beach first. We are out of scholarships to give out, so off-season recruiting isn't going to matter. So although we got all our guys, we're going to have to pass on folks like Dennis Thomas, who have 88 man coverage, 88 speed. And yep, as expected, he chose to go with Memphis instead of being a walk-on, no scholarship player here. No five-star signees this year, but who needs them when you got 10 four-stars and the third best class in all of college football. Keep your eyes on Gabe White this year as the dude is a certified two-way threat. 80 overall corner, but wait, there's more 80 overall receiver next two-way. I think we need more help in the secondary, but I'm going to put him also in the depth chart for receiver. Our receiver room is loaded with young talent. Tight ends too, and man, I feel bad. I don't know what to do at the moment with Brian Williams. He's third on the depth chart, but he was a machine for our guys last year. Going to keep my eye on Stone Boston, younger brother of legend Rock Boston. I think his speed and strength make him a threat for day one starter. Training results are in, and we got a really solid squad on our hands. John John, 90 four overall. With 95 power move, 95 finesse, you don't want to get in his way. Brent, our senior running back, up to 92 overall with 93 speed, 98 excel. And then we got sophomore Zach Miller, a 90 overall in just his second year. And then to make another deep run, you need guys like this, high 80 overall depth players. Everyone wants to be a sponge, so we're going to have to make some roster cuts. So let's get chopping. Just learned something new about our Alaskan linebacker. Scott Osborne can also play safety, so that's pretty sick. Taking a look at the new guys, we have a new Boston in town. It's Stone Boston. Can't forget about the offensive line. Gotta show the big boys some love as Greg McIntyre, an 80 overall true freshman. Two-way star Gabe White ready to get some in-game action as a freshman dual threat. So get used to seeing this offense and defensive snaps for White. Last preseason act of year seven here. We got to set up the recruiting board and oh my goodness, Zach Landry, the number one recruit in all of the nation is interested in our school. And all these four stars made my board. Only minus one for Zach Landry when we scout him out. So that's an 81 overall with 93 route running. Five preseason All-Americans, three first teamers, Tim Hawley, John John, and Barry. Second team All-Americans, Zach Miller and Brian Williams. And yeah, let's just say we run the Mountain West. Am I right? I already know what I must need to do. 700 points and a scholarship. Zach Landry needs to come home. Leonard Bush looks like a solid athlete as well. And another bald recruit, according to this profile pick, Marcus Smith, will give him a scholarship. And there we go. David Lawrence at Insta Commit. Three-star corner just should be a good depth guy. And make it two four-star linebacker Evan Murphy also really just a depth guy we have finally cracked the 90 overall threshold 91 offense 93 defense a beautiful sunny day here in San Diego the site of this one is Salona Beach coach Philip Rivers coming off an impressive coach of the year campaign but he's not satisfied. The revenge tour starts now. And at the start of this New Year's campaign, we are 17th ranked in the nation. And we'll start off with a quick pass to Tim Williams, the freshman receiver. There were a lot of guys you didn't get to see in the preseason warmups, but uh, they're ready to go. But man, I can't wait to see the year two jump from quarterback Miller and Dwayne Cade, the stud receiver. Let's go back on the ground to Brent Burrell. And finally, for the first time in seven years, we have an 80 plus overall offensive line. Maybe I won't have to scramble right every single play. <laughs> You know what I mean? And Stone Boston gets his first collegiate catch. That's a big moment. And just for the memes, I might have to give him an opportunity to pass a touchdown like his older brother did. His big catch has been smooth sailing here as we score and top off the opening drive of year seven with a tutty. There's his 38th career touchdown. Take a look at Osborne over here playing safety right now, going up against the tight end in this one-on-one -on -one matchup. 93 overall defense though. We're feeling scary this year. And wow, we just over pursue him. I expect big things from this bunch and I want to be hosting up hardware 
where at the end of the season. App State dinking and dunking their way down in. Oh man, I just whiffed with Barry there. He's got some time here. He finds Jenkins as tight end, but he's going to be stopped short. I guess I can live with giving up three points on the opening drive for App State. Start of the second quarter. At the end of the day, I don't think app state or really anyone for that matter is going to have an easy time sticking with us let's keep this drive going and i don't really see anything mounting up here just going to get rid of it thank goodness but i guess i did it the wrong way oops intentional grounding what play you all drawing up here on third and 34 because i think i found the right one and that's Dwayne k that's just got to be embarrassing if you're going to blow your assignment on a third and 34 as davis just walks around this guy i was pumped to see our first receiver get drafted in the nfl but trust me this group of receivers is going to be a potent bunch and well that's a mistake you're in good hands though when you got a good defense that can take care of business and well not much business taken care of there john brown the most generic name just absolutely gets right past the secondary app state across midfield here going with a little option play they are actually going to choose the pass and rankin comes back for it gabe white was the man on the coverage so gabe white's getting his first little taste of collegiate football playing some db it's going to be a experiment here over a couple games but i think he'll pick it up fast third down here we have to make the stop now and wow tightly covered he still caught it chris thomas secures it for app state they're on the board with a touchdown next thing you know we're looking at the two minute drill you can never count anyone out here in college football third and 19 i'm just going to send everyone out to a four vertical look hope for anyone to get by their db and hey Dwayne cade has the burners so we got to move and move fast if we want to get points i'm gonna jump it out to williams there's the six foot eight tight end down to seven seconds left what a catch by stone boston there seeing him lay out like that really caused me to lose my train of thought and bro i was still just absolutely in shock by the catch that i throw a pick to end the half let's clean it up here in the second half i don't want to keep making mistakes as i've been doing and hey maybe wow we got burnt again third and 15 and he's just gonna dump it out here to Johnson and he's short so field goal incoming field goal did not pay off for the Mountaineers and we're gonna hand it off to Brent and I thought he had some space Philip Rivers has made a name for himself as a coach by being extremely aggressive and that's what we're doing here on fourth and six and wow inches short it didn't pay off it's always a gamble because it puts your defense here in a very awkward position but Victor Stevens was all over that reading it like a book and he comes down with the pick now we can get back to work here and maybe do a better job moving the chains still not hitting the panic button one bit as I think we can get this thing going. A couple big runs here, and they don't know what's hit them as Brent is off to the races again. Offensive line finally starting to shape up, and just look at these blocks, man. Two yards from Pager. I'm going to let Brent just finish the job that he started. Third and 15 here. We got the dogs out here in cover three, and bro, okay. Definitely going to have a couple things here to work on in practice as it's a fourth and one. Can we get the stop? Will he make the tackle? No, he sheds it. Not exactly how I thought week one would be going right now as they have us on the ropes, and he fumbles and as soon as I speak about the ropes, it's Victor Stevens scooping up the fumble. The fumble is a big change in momentum as they were driving down our field. Now I'm thinking we can just put this one to bed as Zach Miller is going to keep it with a lot of space here. Was one block really away from taking it to the house. Just three minutes left in this one here. Little play action. Wide open receiver. Keeps the toes in. Davis gets it done. Back to the air here. Brian Williams. The six foot eight tight end is breaking free. No one is going to stop this man. Touchdown. And I'd like to say that was the dagger, but look at how close they are with still so much time let's go ahead and get the stop here third and goal that's how we handle it i wish these guys nothing but the best in the sunbelt conference but when you're stepping on salona beach's field we're gonna soak you up and i was really just trying to hype up our guys to get the fourth down stop let's see if we can just yeah properly secure that we don't want any funny business just a couple handoffs here and we should be good to go let's get them all out of timeouts and shoot i'm taking a gamble here third down i'm gonna go for a pass and i'm just gonna lob this one up to stone boston and i don't know why it led him into the safety essentially forcing our defense now to step up and be the hero in this one the offense couldn't get it done fourth and one will he step up the quarterback is dropped for a sack and that is game john john the man who specializes in finishing games with big sacks at a boy passing big willie on the all-time school list and the Salona Beach Sponge soak up game one the home opener in year seven so off to that 1-0 start we were hoping to have just cleaned up the board and added some new guys and we found the recruits we should have been looking for this entire time I mean just look at this list as I go down minus that bus there but look at all the gems well I hope week one was shaking some rust off because week two against USC finally got the clout to bring the big boys in down and it's not going to be easy Trojans sponges it's a packed crowd once again because this is a little inter-California battle and I'm excited for this one USC's ranked we're ranked it's going to be good besides the unexpected 
good stuff that happens in rivalry games i think this is our toughest matchup of the year so what i'm saying is if we can get through these guys we should be able to get through anyone in the mountain west second and one i'm dialing up this play for chavis the senior fullback's been around for a while and when you pay your dues here at salona beach good things happen and stone boston early and often feed the man older brother rock boston had to come in for this game and he's on the sidelines rooting on the lime and lavender man had a stint in the canadian football league but he's just about at the age where he's ready to probably hang up the cleats and brent burrell what a catch and run calm under pressure there secures it and securing it once more stone boston got them hands dripped out with that brace i think one of his favorite players is gronk because he sure has taken inspiration from him third and three i think i need to just trust the run here and man i should have handed it off brent burrell is the red zone specialist so i really should have gave him a shot here come on zach fight Oh man, turnover with inches short. We've seen that a couple times early in the season. I really was hoping we could get some big points here to kick off the game. But now we're forced to take on our defense here and make a stop if we can. Three and out is exactly what I want to see. And I'm bringing in the heat. No, I got right past him. Wait, I got a chance to get a second chance there. And I do deliver. John John was there with me. Third down, running back is open here. Let's jump it out to Brent and he gets sticked. He's just short. Of course, did you expect anything less? I am going to go for it here. And unfortunately, I see absolutely no one and now we're about to get punished here usc in the red zone now make it first and goal asking the goal line defense here to make a big stand and he gets the touchdown that nelson dude has been all over the field we just need to get into a rhythm because it's third and 12 again and we're having a hard time getting something going some would call me a madman but third time's a charm am i right fourth down handoff to nolan scope he's got it when it's midfield and beyond we become like dan campbell of the lions we don't mess around we're going for it and there we go now we're getting a little bit a momentum and well say goodbye to any momentum on that one the crushing blow and fumble sends us all the way back to second and 32 and yo just turn around and make a play seriously might have had a chance if he wasn't lost in no man's land davis however gets 24 back 46 yard field goal here i need a big one with the leg does he have enough juice he does still a one possession game here one minute to go and barnes is so open i really get the sense that if we step out of the mountain west we will not be an annual national championship contender yet huge third down here it looks like a slip screen i kind of saw that brewing in the background all over it avery avery was there we call a timeout because we want to stop this field goal and then get the pigskin back with 18 seconds left never say never all it takes is a big play and i guess that's a big play for the defense well now only nine seconds remaining not much going well here and we're gonna have to just settle halftime is here down by a touchdown third and 14 really need some magic here need to connect with someone in the end zone will it be you tim williams yes sir come through for me on the opening drive of second half at a boy well we know one thing's for sure it's going to be a dog fight to the very end and can we make a play here good stuff this is the drive to get ahead and i guess the play action is still not a good idea see if we can get some chunks back here starting off with a little curl flat to Dwayne cade yes sir let's go with the read option here zach miller keeps it himself and there was someone waiting coach was thinking it could be good to punt here but surveying the defense i think we can really run this play and get it and I was wrong. Well, if I've learned anything this game is that I've been a fool here on offense going for it. Thank goodness we still stopped him. It's when I read something so good, I'll sometimes over pursue it. Thankfully, we still hold him three. Just some clean football is needed here. And that run gets us a first down. Now we're going to throw here and across the middle looks open. Tim comes down with it. Looks like we have three Williams on this team. Blake Williams, Tim Williams, and Brian Williams. Should be able to get a chance here to see Wiggins, the freshman running back, catch and run. We really need everyone to step in in this effort because without the senior leadership, it's anyone's team. And now we have a lead, but will it be for long? Long. that is the question of the hour right now and of course i get off my zone there and he goes to him here we go a little read option qb keeper burry has a space a lane green grass turf whatever you want to call it he's into the end zone this is where the fun begins going toe for toe stone boston is just going to take that one going to see if we can keep working it here across the middle to brent first down now we got a little bit of momentum can dump this one out to cade and he's right past heath there and gets us into the red zone down the field we go Stone Boston just tops it off. It's bittersweet. The first touchdown of his collegiate career. Atta boy, Stone 
Give me some nicknames to say with Stone there. I, I don't know any rhymes or rhythms. Well, with two minutes to go, this second half has really lived up to the hype here. We're really going toe for toe with a good USC team. The preferred idea here is to get the stop on defense, but if they're going to score, we need time to score back. They're going to go back to the ground, though. They know that they're not in as much hurry as it looks. With all this time left, they're by no means needing to pass. But after that big hit, they just might need to right here. And yep, Avery and the defense knew what was coming. Game is on the line right here. It's another slip screen. Can Barry make the stop? He does, turning it over. USC tried going with two slip screens on a third down and a fourth down, and it is no bueno for them. It's all over. Let's friggin' go. We get the ESPN Classic W here. Zach Miller, efficient game all across the board. So your Salona Beach Sponges are 2-0 with two nail biters early in the season. 2-0 is still 2-0. We've been doing enough to win these games. Now it's time to let it fly. It's the battle for the beaches, the Pacific Coast, Atlantic Coast. We're meeting up on the teal field. Let's go show who's boss. Here we go. Got the lime jerseys on today. The script lavender helmets. It's always a fun one against the Chanticleers. And well, to clarify, I should be saying it's been fun for us of lately. And Cade, they have a Cade of their own who we just whiff and he's going to go pretty dang close to the end zone. So not only is it Battle of the Beaches, let's find out what Cade does better today. Let me know in the comment section right now who you think will have the better day. Is it going to be Dwayne or Phillip? Man, Murphy though. Can we talk about that catch? The one-handed snag was crazy. Let's go ahead and get back right against these guys. Here's RK getting involved. Just five. Five yards is a long way to go here on fourth down, but read option might be the right call as we get enough and some big play. Coastal is coming out blazing on offense and defense, and Dwayne could not hold on to that one. Really making my life difficult right now. I need Brian here to step up for us. We got a fourth and five. Why can't we get fourth and one? Thank you. All right, Dwayne, let me keep pumping you because we need to get you right. Ain't no way we can let another Cade outdo you in the Battle of the Beaches. No, Brent on that run looks really shaken up. One thing we can hang our hat on though is depth at a lot of positions and we are stacked at running back too. Thankfully, he only dislocated his wrist so he's only gonna be out for one quarter and Wiggins gets his first ever carry. Big third down here. What's it gonna be? across to Stone Boston. He bounces off one, but can't bounce off two. We have literally gone for fourth down now for the third time on this drive. It's got to work, and it will work once more. Crazy how successful that has become as Scope to the outside cashes in. First quarter is over. Second quarter is upon us. It's time to pat it on. Little red zone action here quick in this one, and oh man, that pressure came in fast, but we scrambled to the left, and we have a lane. Teal Field, meet Zach Miller. That was a play that was really impressive. Quick three and out, and we're back on offense, ready to let it fly. And there he is, Williams, at the other end of that one. I just noticed Coastal has a safety with the last name Stone. So not only do they have one of our receivers, Cade, right here, they have Stone as well. They say if you can't beat him, join him, and that's exactly what it feels like in this one. Anyone else getting the vibe already that this one could be over sooner than you know? And then hold the phone. I was just thinking we were getting some momentum here. They pick it off. But maybe that pick was just a fluke. You never know. If the defense plays tough. It might not have been a fluke after all. Their defense may be tough, but I think we're just a bit tougher as Dwayne Cade just clears that one by a mile. So as you can tell here, we were able to come into Coastal and do what we had to do. I'd say I feel bad for them, but let's be real. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Touchdown. Tim Williams in the back of the end zone there. Keeps the feet in. No questions at all about this one as we came in, took care of business, got right, and now we are going to be steaming into the Mountain West on a roll. The Akron Zips gave us a little scare last time we played them. We came out on top, but it's another round against the Zips. Can never count anyone out. However, Akron is traveling to San Diego in Salona Beach. We got all our fans behind us, 3-0 in the season, now in the top 10. Just needed a little rival game under our belt to get everyone moving efficiently here and Williams gonna go down the sideline he's no speedster like Buchanan might be time to unleash our secret weapon here we haven't gotten the dual threat involved as much it was interesting to me because coming out of high school he was an 80 overall at both positions but when you put him out of position in NCAA 14 he loses like half his awareness definitely afraid he could drop a ball or two but he's in there right now in the slot and we're gonna go to him he comes down with it and that's a first down there is a lot to like about Gabe White and I think one of the things I like a lot is just the fact that he's got 96 speed. Second and goal. You know who's become reliable down here? It's Chavis, the fullback. But in this scenario, let's just give it to Scope to go up the middle and finish the job. Oh, man, he's short. I think it's a good time to experiment with the triple option here. And yeah, we're going to flick this one out. <laughs> and uh, 
Well, that was blown up in every direction. Don't quote me on this, but I think every opening drive right now in all four games so far has been turned over. 90 overall versus a mid-70 overall team. We should feel the difference in a big way here. That's fourth down. Fresh set here at midfield. The scrambling out to our right. Let's just dump it here to, I think that's Brian Williams. Running the play action here. Pressure just absolutely in our face. Maybe this is something the speedster here, the dual threat can help us with as he gets a step on his man. And he is going. He couldn't go all the way, but he did exactly what we asked him to do if Gabe keeps stepping up as a receiver too there's no way I can bench the guy I mean look at him just haul in anything his way it's definitely too early to start talking about Heisman but I don't know if NCAA 14 properly accounts dual threats I do know this a touchdown is awfully sweet right now so nice we might have to do it twice and Stone Boston is gonna break through first and goal and now that we are here let's finish it off with a lob to Brian and yo I said let's finish it off with a lob to Brian thank you Zips managed to put up over 35 points against us the first time we met and yo if that was a Madden animation I would have been lurking that third and six bringing in some pressure here and wow he's open again so we choke another third down third and seven just make sure it's all covered up here and that'll do 40 seconds left I think we got some damage to be done here in the first half we just got to start moving it and talk about moving it Cade is out of here touchdown and that passing touchdown puts Zach Miller ahead of Adam Allen as the school's passing touchdown leader and he's only a sophomore third and nine Akron just looking for any spark whatsoever and it's not gonna come the matchup right now that we have going on against Akron is a sneak peek of what I believe will be the story all Mountain West if we keep playing like this we'll be right back into the championship and it's time to kick it into the gear if we want to win it this time I think we have a lot of room for improvement and white with a snag he's up almost at 100 yards on the game man gets done with playing defense comes back out on offense it's great and what's not great here is i just got completely baited into that patrick interception but oh well it's no big deal when you got the luxury of a 93 overall defense there's white on defense making the stop so we'll get a good dose of him throughout the year and so far, I think Chavez can do this. Wow, why did he run so slow? Zip's defense starting to get a little tired. I'm not going to lie. So I think we have room to capitalize. I'm going to call a read option here. I think Zach Miller's got the room in the legs. In def oh my gosh, those blocks made me blush. That was crazy. Let's just hand it off to Brent. See if he can stretch it out to the right here. Keeping his balance. That was expert craftsmanship there, sir. Just a first down away from ending this one officially. And yeah, it's official. If you didn't think it was going to happen, it happened. But if anyone's out here voting for Akron in a matchup against Salona Beach, I don't know what to tell you. You're looking at a wrong universe, maybe a parallel one. Quick recruiting update. We're about to close in on a few guys, and I think we're going to free up a bunch of points to go target other folks. But I'm really excited about guys like David Gardner here. And I just realized I haven't offered him a scholarship. And I was hoping that the saving factor would kick in, but it doesn't. Who wouldn't want an 80 overall Jim DB for their team? Let the all Mountain West slate begin with a matchup here against the Colorado State Rams. These guys are down in the dumps, desperately needing a win. They haven't done it yet in the young season and Salona Beach just looking to keep the momentum going. AP top 25 update. We are now number eight in the top 10 officially. Third and 10. Let's go with a flat, get Cade involved. And with his speed, he's going to go down the sideline. He's a threat to break it all right back again and what is he doing on defense there just leaving Gabe White like that flirting outside the red zone and now we're gonna be in the red zone I'm thoroughly enjoying this I have to say I mean coming from a place where we could barely muster a win together barely get a touchdown I mean remember year one 0 and 12 it's the flip opposite right now it's domination I still keep the same sentiment even if we give up a touchdown here and there coming back to the run game here it's a read option hold that block big man yes sir thank you love me a good read option and there are rumors that those are going to be cracked in the new game plus just the speed of college and how everything's just so much faster I'm excited to see how that translates to the game well I think Stone Boston looks open to me there and I was hoping that block would go to the right. A little slant action here. Williams, anyone? No. Colorado State on the brink of having no fans show up whatsoever. And oh my goodness. Rock Boston. I mean, Stone Boston. I happen to notice that Randall Cooper is now in the game. So that means something happened to our QB1. Hope he just rests up here and gets better. But in the meantime, we're going to have to go back on defense and get a stop. And that is no problem for these guys. So with the punt coming, we're going to get the ball back. I hope Zach Miller is okay. Got what he needed checked out in the blue tent. For now, it's going to be Randall at the helm. So we're going to have to make it work. And breaking news, he's going to be out the rest of the game because he has a concussion. So Randall has got it held down for the rest of 
this one and that's a great start up by a touchdown now let's get the stop on defense and get it right back to the offense let's see what randall's got for an encore here it's third down i think he should just step up and get the first and that he does yet yeah, he tried to get fancy and cute with it coughs it up Colorado State picks it. Randall and team just looking for some ball security on this drive. Let's call up the slants here. Maybe we get someone to spring open. If not, that's what Randall's here for, just to take it himself. Second and seven, after a couple run plays, we have a wide open Cade, and he's gonna go all the way into the red zone. The offense may be young, but there'll always be a hole when you're facing our team. Someone's gonna get open. Let's go back to the read option here. Brent has a pretty clear lane. All right, third and goal here. Just a quick slant, and that's a touchdown from Joe Davis. Before halftime here, if we can get some more points, we're all in favor of that. We want to route these guys, make them wish, you know, that they didn't face us. Third and 15, it's Brian. You can always count on this guy. He is a six foot eight tight end that has a lot of acceleration in the 90s. And now we're talking with less than 10 seconds to go. We have a good chance at getting at least some points. Risky, but I'm going to take one more shot to the end zone. And I might have had a man. And oh my goodness. Instead, we'll settle for three and at just kidding we won't we take a 21 7 lead to half no problem pretty smooth sailing right now i'm not too worried about it as Cade's gonna get us right into the first and goal zone 10 yards to go let's just dump this one out Ooh, it was a contested ball 50 50 really and williams went and got it screen read that and 20 was there to get him out of bounds we're doing a good job just taking off clock and not letting the rams offense do anything and go ahead and pat it on more brent i must say we did try and warn everyone that was about to face us that we were not to be messed with heartbroken after losing natty what did y'all think was gonna happen it's called a revenge tour for a reason not let's all be friends tour all in all i'm really happy with how randall's been able to step in today and just get the job done he has done everything we asked of him so with that win adam miller liked what he saw he decided to go ahead and commit going into nevada week we have so many recruits ready to visit and definitely some good ones at that so let's go put on a show looks like we need to put a lot of focus on the passing game spreading the love between receivers and tight ends and i don't think that will be a problem for the boys in lime and lavender zach miller is is on a mission this year he's a dual threat he's gonna be a heisman candidate one day if not today third and 12 here opening try for the wolf pack and that is not gonna fly gabe white on defense the dual threat shutting it down i know we got a lot of recruits that want to see us pass but i'm gonna start off with a run because i think we can open up the pass game even more if we establish this gotta take a mental note we need 100 yards on the tight end and we need 250 from the receivers so we'll start off there tim williams in 19 pass midfield gonna dump it down low it's williams once more this is a high flying offense and we're definitely gonna keep it pushed Except in this scenario, we couldn't connect, but I'm gonna give it another try on fourth down. If we just had a split second longer, I would have had Stone Boston. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Should we entertain the offers to join a Power 5 conference? And if so, where should we go? What do you guys wanna see? Who should we entertain? Because when you're winning this many games and competing in the top 10 of the AP 25 poll, you'll have leverage. So I don't think anyone's off the table if it makes sense for our school. But right now, Phillip Rivers is focused on getting past Nevada. Going with the two tight end set here, trying to get some of them more involved. And yep, Brian, I knew I could count on you. Somehow Nevada defense is just giving it to us right now. Couple big signees in the wings here for the offensive line. So uh, that's much needed. Lining up Stone Boston as a receiver. Let's see if we get a mismatch here and oh man he was open they're bringing another blitz because it's probably working and i just felt the pressure and need to get the ball off and i forced it lucky for us we'll get opportunity all day long because i am confident that the offense will eventually get going the defense will hold in just under two minutes i think first blood's gonna go to joe davis yes sir it's important for us to make a statement with the whole farm visiting us essentially and lawson says i'm gonna do something y'all don't want me to do but let's let craig know he's 0 for 5 on third down conversions and we plan on keeping it that way 0 for 6. 50 second drill here i think we can make some damage don't you and holy ragdoll stone boston went flying i just hope he's feeling all right because i'm sure that had to hurt and way to go shrug that off and get some more yards quickly back to the line just gonna hand it off to brent see if he can plunge forward out gaining nevada by three times right now in this one like i said i'm not worried if our defense can hold it's just a matter of when the offense will get going miller got us to fourth and inches will he be able to get the first down conversion and oh man that guy's fast so no shot. And okay, that just happened. I simmed the kickoff return in the second half, and Kevin Goodman takes it to the house for 91. And everything's all good, man, with that big touchdown on special teams. And now let's just pile it on with a big sack. We still got to close in on some game goals, so I'm going for it here on fourth down, and Brian converts. If it ain't broke, we're not going to fix it here. We're going to go out to K, the receiver this time, and he's just going to fight forward, and he fights all the way through. 
he was not to be denied. He was determined to score. Yard by yard, we are getting closer to our goals for the game, and that's a big, big chunk of it. And yeah, that's a goal right there, 250. I don't think it'll surprise anyone when I come out and say that there's NFL caliber talent on this roster right now. Some of these guys are going to be blown up on the biggest stage on Sundays. The only way Nevada could score on us was through special teams. So if that says anything about the defense, well, it was a masterclass performance. Over the middle, Stone Boston laying out again. He is so acrobatic. I've noticed that about the tight end. He is not wasting any time in his true freshman year. And if you believe it, we are now out gaining Nevada by 5x. That is crazy. And dude, you were open and we could have made it 6x. That's right. Nevada has been only held to 70 total yards of offense. And what another determined play. This is exactly the energy I need to see if we're going to make a run back to the natty. Honestly, though, with his last couple touchdowns, it's hard to tell. Is it Dwayne Cade or is it Dwayne the Rock Johnson out there? Backups are in. It simply has been a no contest in this one. And look at Gabe White with the speed. The dual threat just outran his man. Already up 35-7. We still got to feel out the backups and just let them have their fun. Joe Davis and everyone today in the receiving core are just embarrassing Nevada defense. I guess while we're here, let's see if we can give Wiggins his first collegiate touchdown. And yeah, okay. <laughs> This is why you never pre-script a play. That was all she wrote nonetheless, and Salona Beach is gonna be cruising to a 6-0 start on the season. It's been all blue skies and sunshine over here in the last handful of games. And I'm gonna send you all soaking it up watching right now home on a very, very happy note. I mean, 81 overall Kelvin Pryor, got him. Number one prospect in all of college football, got him. Zach Landry is going to be a stud. David Gartner, Got him. Can't forget about Leonard Bush, Marcus Smith, and Willie Carlson. It's unprecedented times over here in Salona Beach. Once the machine gets up and running, there's no stopping it. And as you're seeing, it's evident in our play style. We are not just beating people, we're humiliating opponents. This is the Sponge way, so keep soaking it up with your boy King Sponge. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you all in the next one. In the meantime, I got some other videos all lined up that you are sure to enjoy.